So good evening, Dr. Lakshman. Thank you for joining us uh, at that day. So before we start, can I uh, request you to give a brief introduction of who you are for people who are watching this? I am uh, basically a chemotologist and uh, I work in Apollo uh, Society Hospital, Chennai. And uh, I was uh, trained in peripheral blood stem cell selection, cryopreservation, and I've been doing this job apart from other hematopathology work. And uh, uh, so that's my uh, basic uh, work, and I've uh, been doing it for about uh, 29 years now. Wow. 29 years. And you've been um, associated with that since about 2011. 2011. So, uh, if I might ask, what made you join? Datri, that time a very new registry now, the largest in India, but why did you join when it was still new? Actually, the concept of registry was not at all uh, thought about in a country like India. Though it, the concept of registry was well known in US, Germany and uh, European countries. So, when Datri established this registry at that point of time, <coughs> it was really a uh, um, it was my passion to really uh, seamlessly blend with the Datri work and uh, try to see whether we can help uh, unrelated patients uh, who are uh, wanting to have uh, peripheral blood stem cell transplant but do not have uh, any uh, HLA type sibling either in their family or in the extended family such. So this registry uh, really helped me uh, to sort of um, put my passion into some meaningful work all these years. That's good to know. And uh, 10 years down the line, any guidance or any suggestions for Tadri and how to do better in the future? I think uh, there is immense scope for improvement. And uh, one of the things which probably I can suggest is Whatever existing collection centers you have, we can tone them up very well. That's one. Like, um, we can try to identify very good doctors who can do uh, stem cell collection, take care of the patient, take care of the documentation, and also a couple of uh, nurses, who are for after the trained nurses can be appointed to make the whole experience a little bit more pleasant because they know the job. Okay, that's one. And, um, we should make sure that every center has a CD34 uh, uh, enumerating equipment. Right. Like board for CD34. Yeah. And uh, uh, so maybe these are three areas where we can concentrate a lot and know about a lot of implement and it will also enhance the collection the status. True uh, collections must. How is um, unrelated collection different from a family donation? Related donations is sort of a contract because uh, a meaningful contract with the family because the family member knows that uh, his brother, sister or even father, mother who can be a match is uh, having a uh, problem and one of them have to give HLA type peripheral uh, blood stem cells for the rescue of the particular patient in the family. So it becomes a sort of uh, meaningful contract and uh, uh, a sense of um, commitment to the family. So that uh, stops at that level. They come, they donate and they walk away. But uh, unrelated uh, donors, it's a very, very tricky situation. Maybe I can just quote from some of the points that jotted here. <clears throat> so we can have unrelated donors in three groups. Some of them are um, have that inherent quality to come home voluntarily and go through the entire counseling, checkups, and all that, and willingly submit themselves to peripheral blood stem cell collection without any inhibition. So these are very clean, unrelated donors. And some uh, a small proportion of them require a lot of scheduling before they undertake this uh, procedure. And then you have the dropouts. So the three groups are. The fourth group is very interesting because though they are interested, the family doctor tells them they can they cannot do it. Right. So these four groups, that the last two are a little bit uh, very difficult to 
really manage. Even the doctors might find it difficult to convince them. But maybe, yes, if you have uh, uh, 25 such uh, unrelated donors who are at the, uh, sitting on the fence, maybe you can convert about uh, 10 or 12 of them and uh, successfully to come and donate the pet food or stem cells. So, but that requires a lot of sessions, maybe showing live demos or making them come and see a live procedure, what it is done, uh, will really uh, transform the mind uh, uh, in a more positive way to come and donate them. Rest, uh, uh, they are all uh, 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 obstinate people, uh, so we really cannot convert them at all. So, so uh, Doctor, you mentioned that some people don't donate because their family doctor said no. Uh, so, what can Dhatri do different or what can the doctors do different who are working with Dhatri uh, yes. do different to ensure that this percentage comes down? Actually, most of these family doctors, um, they have been practicing family physicians who just, who are just like general practitioners. So, I wouldn't blame them because their knowledge of bone marrow transplant or um, uh, uh, that there is a registry and that there is a stem cell collection process and stem cell rescue process is not known to them. So in case if the particular unrelated donor can give us a contact number of the doctor, probably you can either by a video call or in person you can go and talk to the doctor and also bring him to the facility where stem cell is collected and show them that this is the way it is done and give them a very relevant statistics about how much you have done, how much patients have survived and all that. Maybe then that education will help that particular doctor to motivate the family uh, patients. So I think uh, this is the lack of, pure lack of awareness either on the part of the patient or on the part of the family doctor. Um, so you've done uh, a substantial number of donations with that. So is there anything that a donor should take care of? Uh, prior to the collection so that he gives what is termed as a good product for the patient? Actually, um, it all, uh, it's not a good product or uh, uh, average product or anything. It's the ability of the particular donor to produce enough stem cells. Okay. Some of them uh, might be very healthy but still cannot produce adequate stem cells despite giving uh, college related factors. So there's... Um, but we can try to improve the quality of uh, health of such uh, particular donors by identifying vitamin uh, D deficiency, uh, iron deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, uh, folate deficiency. And if they have a thyroid problem, we can correct the thyroid problem. We can control their diabetes, we can control their hypertension and uh, make them uh, uh, take food which is nutritious, like containing a lot of fiber, vegetables and all that, will really help at least um, to increase the CD34 count by a few cells. Okay. So that is very important. There. So where, that's why we ask for a day 4 CD34. So yes. that day 4 CD34 is going to help us to know what will be the outcome on the day 5 collection. Okay. So in most instances we get a clue as to um, whether this particular donor is going to mobilize enough stem cells. So the, if they reach about 40, 50 cells, it's really good for us to go ahead with the collection. Once it comes to 20 and 15 on day 4, day 5, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. But even then, um, what we do for this related donors is we put a femoral line and process 20 liters of blood. Okay. So that's going to take 4 and a half hours. That so, with that with the unrelated donor, it's going to be again an issue. Like we have to counsel them for a femoral line and say the procedure is going to take four and a half hours. We have to process 20 liters of blood and all that. So, it's still it is worthwhile. You can try. Okay. And post donation, does a donor need to take any precautions? The way we do all the investigations, with the way we counsel them, we look at every organ. We don't miss any organ. And... Uh, Maybe psychologically also we can uh, sort of counsel them about uh, the particular donation and the outcome of the donation and everything. But overall, we have in fact restored their health by doing all the investigations, finding out what deficiencies they have and we give very suitable advice them to follow after the donation. So, 
once their health is restored, we simply ask them to maintain their health for the rest of their life. That is more than enough. So the, whatever lifestyle we have taught them through the instructions which we give, they should follow for the rest of their life. Right. So, uh, Dr. Lakshman, in your uh, thoughts, does a donor lose anything by donating blood stem cells? Actually, uh, <coughs> they are just losing their stem cells, to be uh, very honest. But uh, Does it have any long-term implications? Well, we are just taking a small minuscule of the stem cell population. So, there are just millions of cells, and then we are taking only a small um, fraction of the CD34 cells. So, uh, actually they don't lose anything at all. And what do you think they gain? They gain, uh, I mean, they have the prospect, uh, uh, have the real psychological mentality to understand the process. I think they get an emotional satisfaction now helping another patient. Okay. So, now that uh, Datri is on the verge of throwing a thousand collections, uh, any guidance? Any words of... You just go collections away, that's correct. a good thing. And uh, it's been a long and unique journey for Datri. We have gone through a lot of trials and tribulations and a lot of organizing uh, difficulties and all that. But that's a, a huge achievement to reach thousand donations. And uh, um, I really look forward for the thousandth uh, collection. Thank you so much, sir. And your support has been immense. Uh, You've been one of our strongest supporters from day one, so uh, we really appreciate the support and the guidance that you've uh, extended to us. So, um, as Datri moves ahead, um, I know we spoke about doing uh, drive in your daughter's company. So, how else do you think we can approach doctors to help us grow the base? Because the more the base, the more the matches and more patients can be uh, served. I think uh, this particular, uh, in India, unlike uh, Germany or US or anything, you should create something which has a mass appeal. You know? So, uh, um, in fact, in one of the movies, one actor donated blood, and blood donation picked up in all government hospitals. So, at least uh, you should create a video or um, a digital uh, uh, projection where a very prominent person in the industry, in the, uh, maybe a businessman, maybe an industrialist, or maybe an actor, or maybe a doctor himself, um, can, as the process is going on, can tell the entire masses that this is how it is done and there are no issues and answer basic questions as the procedure goes on. So it creates some media which has a mass appeal. Especially in India. Doctors can play a role, but you know how people are crazy about uh, cinema. Uh, Rajanigant movie or Kamala's movie, people flock to the theatre and uh, they say uh, they uh, enact uh, Rajanigant or uh, react Kamala's and they could like. So if uh, Rajanigant donates blood, many people donate blood. Kamala's and donates blood, they will donate blood. So you have young people who are uh, uh, doing all this. We have a couple of uh, young actors who are already in the job, encouraging blood donation in government colleges. Mm -hmm. So they go and uh, they donate blood and the entire uh, quarterly follows them. About 100 people follow them to donate blood. Right. So uh, I think we have to put our thoughts together, sit together and see what digital media we can create to impress the masses. We cannot be going to everybody, you know, but the digital media reaches them in no time like WhatsApp or Email. Right. So we should that concept we should build. Okay, and something like uh, you know, like um, we had a friend who was very good in photography and videoing. He's the one who can sell this concept by taking good videos and mm -hmm. uh, and we need uh, publishing rights in cinema theaters where in the interval we can put a ten minute slot. Right. Okay, and the same copies can be shown in schools, colleges. Uh, multinational companies, you know, so that uh, we need not be always depending upon a doctor to ultimately it comes to a doctor, right. but then uh, this digital uh, thing uh, really can work on that. So, uh, one of my last questions, uh, sir, can you explain the apparatus process in very layman terms because people are a little scared about something that they don't understand? In uh, simple terms, what I tell to patients, uh, related patients also is apheresis. 
is collecting cells of choice. That's all. Okay. okay. You can collect your red blood cells, you can collect your platelets, you can collect your white blood cells, and then by a special process, we are going to collect your stem cells. So that is a very simple thing. Only thing you need to undergo certain tests before you get eligible for donating your stem cells, and then we give you a, give you um, uh, some injections to increase the population of your CD34 cells, with, which are lodged in the marrow and coming into the fetal blood, so that we can harvest them and increase the growth. This is a simple process of apheresis and collection of stem cells. Right, it's an outpatient procedure. Majority of the instances, it is an outpatient procedure. But it can be an inpatient procedure in certain restricted cases, like if the patient has diabetes or a hypertension or something, you like to take extra precautions to do this under uh, a protective surrounding or a carrying surrounding. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time. And uh, as we end this, I just wanted to know uh, what would you like to leave as a message for Tatri and for the potential donor? Now the thousand is just under our belt. Make it a gala ceremony for the thousandth uh, election and uh, uh, hope the donor is, uh, must be well prepared and uh, I hope it is a good volunteer donor uh, so that you can really enjoy the uh, collection and the, uh, uh, celebrate the occasion because it's a thousand collection. So the patient who receives also must be very lucky. Uh, to uh, get cured of the condition. So right. these are my prayers for that. And looking forward, I want Dhatri to establish its own collection center. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we do, definitely. Okay. Uh, it's a 10 year dream of mine. So I hope it, hopefully, uh, hopefully it becomes your dream also Absolutely. and make it a reality. We will definitely work towards that. Thank you so much, Dhatri.